If you have a word of testimony, that's fine. If you don't, just say. Sure. <clears throat> this song is called Glory to God, and it talks first about um, how the angels appeared under the shepherds, and then later, of course, the wise men find out about Christ. And then you just wonder what their conversation was like after they left seeing Christ for the very first time, and how they would never be the same. And then switch it around and think about your life, the first time you heard of Jesus Christ and someone led you to the Lord, how your life was never the same. I'm so thankful that um, he takes nothingness and makes so much out of it. We're seeing that in the ministry there, and Guillermo will talk more about that. Um, but it's always, it's never, it never ever gets old to watch someone who's never heard the story of Christ here for the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
come into this place because of the spirit that is filled here. Normally, uh, we, it's a sweet spirit, the spirit of unity, and uh, I know that it is uh, pure. It's, uh, it's what God meant it to be, and uh, we are grateful, and we, uh, I'm looking forward to, to sharing the Word of God with you in just a moment, but I want to tell you about the ministry uh, behind us, if we can put the picture up. Uh, this is, was about two years ago in our anniversary, and uh, we're approaching our 10th anniversary this coming year in 2020, but we are grateful, and I thank you uh, for your prayers. I thank you for your support. I know many of you have supported us uh, financially and also uh, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, your prayers have been a true blessing to us. Uh, it is strengthening to know that people are praying for you and uh, pray for those who are sick this morning, a lot more sick. And so um, it is good to have brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I believe that we have met around Christ, His Word, and His presence this morning. That is the reason why we come to church, uh, to be around Christ. He is the mediator. He is the reason you and I are brothers and sisters because of Him. But uh, God is doing an amazing work, and it is God edifying the work in uh, Richmond, Virginia. So if the picture is back there, you'll see the, uh, the group of the Spanish-speaking people. And we have, uh, we're approaching, in a good service, we're approaching 80s, 80, 75. I know we're about 75 altogether, the faithful ones, and that is a blessing. Uh, God has been uh, true, and uh, He has been uh, more than um, faithful to us, and uh, we are definitely very, very grateful to the Lord for that, and uh, we're continually going forward and uh, pray for our church that we will have a smooth transition and that we will continue going forward reaching people for Christ. Um, so this is the picture, and uh, if anything else I wanted to mention was um, pray for us. We're heading after the service this morning. We're driving back to uh, Richmond. And uh, I pray that there will be no snow in Michigan when we came up here. And uh, thankfully there was no snow. Uh, but uh, I'm afraid of the cold. I, I, there, there's a few things that I don't like. That's water, height, and the cold. But um, I mean, yes, I come from a, a country that is, uh, you know, where it's more tropical and the weather's whether it's uh, more reasonable, but, um, <laughs> but it, is, it is good to have a change, and it is good to be here this morning. Would you stand with me, please? Um, let's read John chapter 4, verses 34 and 35. When you have it, say uh, a loud amen. amen. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, it is very good to, get, to read God's Word. So let's read verses 34 and 35. The Bible says, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say na ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for, the, for they are white already to the harvest. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege to express and preach and proclaim your word. It is the most, uh, the highest call, I believe, and that we, that we will take it seriously this morning. God, I pray that your spirit will strengthen us and will refresh our minds and our hearts. I pray that you will help me, and I pray that you will give me grace as I preach to these dear people. I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for the power of the Spirit of God, which is strengthen us always. And we thank you for your word, thank you for Christ, our example, our leader, the head of this church. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated, please. I don't speak to uh, English congregations often, so it, you know it's a, a little bit difficult because it's not my uh, my original language. 
Uh, I ra you know, in, in your own language, you can go pretty fast, and I'm going to try to do the same this morning. Uh, and because, you know, Spanish, you can go pretty fast. Se va bien rápido todo el tiempo, you know? So, así, bien de volada. And, uh, but in English, it takes, it takes me a little bit longer to communicate, you know, to people and to convey God's message. The message is simple, but it is important, it's vital uh, to the church. The church is Christ's body. And it is, uh, it is, it has a head, and the head is Christ. You know that as a church, and I, I believe that, I believe that I'm speaking to mostly Christians this morning. If you're here, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I hope this morning you come and ask Him to be your Savior and be with Him forever in heaven as well, uh, like we will. But uh, I'm going to speak on the subject of missions. The title of the message is A Vision for Missions. A Vision for Missions. Can you say it out loud for me? A vision for missions. Do it again. A vision for missions. A vision for missions. In the context of this passage, Christ has won somebody for the kingdom of God. Christ came to this earth with a mission to seek and to save that which was lost. And the context here is he went out of his way to Zikar, where he had witnessed to a woman, the Samaritan woman as we know, and she had believed in him. And now she's telling others how to come to Christ. That's what every Christian should do. Tell others how to be saved. That's the reason we're here. But the disciples have gone to look for some food. They have returned and they are wondering why Christ is not eating. And, uh, and, and if you notice, the, the mission here is so, so serious, so, so vital that Christ says, My meat, my food is that I do God's will. In other words, for Christ... Doing His work, God's work, in this world was more important than sleep, more important than rest, and more important than food. Amen. We all like food. Food is the greatest temptation in the world. Amen. Eve was tempted with food. Esau stole his birthright because of food. The devil tempted Christ in the desert through food. Food is not more important than life, because you can die with a belly full of food. Life is more important. The emphasis is, you are more important. Your life is more important. And Christ says, your life is more important. And Christ here is weighing the loss for Christ. And the disciples are saying, eat, Master, eat, Rabbi, why don't you eat? He said, my meat is that I do the work of Him that sent me. Christ came to this world. To do work. And then I finished his work. And he finished that work. When he died on the cross and cried and said. It is finished. That was the work of redemption. For the world. But the work continues. This work has not stopped. And this is the work of missions. Recently I, w I went to the DMV. To get, renew my driver's license. Actually I was there for another. Uh, for, I think it was for, to renew a title. But when I was there, the person told me, your license is expired. Uh, I, I had been online for like an hour. I was like, well, I don't want to wait. So I went back home and I decided that I would go early that morning. So I woke up and I didn't even drink my coffee. Normally I drink coffee. How many of you drink coffee? I think God made coffee. <laughs> And so at that moment I didn't drink it. I went early. It was at 7 o'clock. I was right at the door of the DMV. And there was a man there. He was ahead of me. He was the, I was the second person. Began to talk to him about Christ. And I got to witness to him. And uh, then we went inside. Really, you know, doors open. I'm second. So I come into the place to renew my license. But what I didn't know is that I was supposed to do a vision test. A vision exam. I had to do the whole thing. So I get closer. And the lady says, uh, please... Place your forehead in that reading machine. You know, have you seen that? I hope you do. As you have seen it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I, and she said, put your head there and read line number one. Listen to what she says. From right to left. I said, okay. And then I, I bowed my head and I, I put it, you know, I, I looked at it. It was very dark. I said, I cannot see a thing. She said, do it again. I said, I looked in. I said, I cannot see a thing. She said, try again. I tried again. I said, I'm telling you, I don't know what, I, I don't see it. It's dark. She said, is your nose in between? 
in between the thing. I said, no. He said, put your nose in between those two walls there and push forward. Well, that's different. So I did that. And when I did that, I pushed forward and then I looked and there was the, you know, the lines. And she, she said, read line two for me from right to left. Okay, so second line, so I'm going, all of a sudden I realized my vision is blurry and I can't see. And the, so the panic took over me and I began to think, oh my, I am losing my sight. But then, but then I began to read and, and, and then and when I'm doing that, she said, no, read from left to right. I said, okay, but, but this time I'm like, okay, this is definitely not working. Now, have you ever been in a situation like that? And then, okay, I go, I start reading from left to right. I was in the second letter when somebody interrupts. So she turns and didn't hear what I said. <laughs> so this is what she says. She said, um, do you wear glasses? I said, no. She said, uh, take a moment and refresh your eyes. Refresh your eyes, and then you can read it again. Well, of course, she basically didn't hear what I just read. So she turned around, and finally, I got to read line from left to right, and I and I did I did okay. I passed out, and then the second one, and, and went on and on. And uh, finally, I realized that my eyes, you know, are you know getting blurry. And I, I talked when I talked to Trisha about it. She said, "You know what? I don't think you have your 2020 vision again." Well, this morning, when I was sitting on the, on the steps, uh, Brother Childers, Steve Childers came to said, you know what, everybody will have perfect sight on, on next year. And I said, how's that? He said, because we're going to have 2020 vision. <laughs> Let me ask you one question. As a church, I will speak to you as a church, not as an individual, but as a church. And we got to think as a church. How is Parkview, Parkview's vision for missions? We need to look at the Word of God because God's Word gives us the vision for missions. Everything we preach, everything we teach, everything we practice and everything we believe must come from God's Word. God's Word is the manual for our lives, the practice. That's where we get everything from. So biblically, God conveys His vision to the church through His Word. And that's what I'm going to do tonight, to this morning. I will try to show you, through the Bible, what God's vision is for this world. Think for a moment. This world is vast. It's vast. There's more than 7 million, billion people on this world. What is God doing today? What is God doing in the whole world today? God deals... God is amazing when He does one thing. He does many things through that thing. And the Bible says that the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. We are the light and we are the salt in this world. Where? On this world. The verse that we just read reads, The fields are white. But in the Bible, the world is normally referred to as a... As a what? As a field. Remember Christ is the Son of Man came to, is the one who sows the word. And the field is the world. The harvest is at the end when Christ says, this is it. There's a time. There's a limit. God has established in the, in the clocks of God. There comes a moment, there comes a time when God is going to, see, is going to bring out His judgment of this world. There's a moment when, there's a time when God is going to say to the church, Church, come up here. And the dead in Christ will arise. And we will be caught up in the air. And we will meet God in the air. And we will be with Him forever and ever. That is our living hope, our, our glorious hope. And that is our life hope eternal from Christ. Amen. That is what we hope for. We believe that we will resurrect one day. We believe that we will be immortal in heaven. We will live in eternal life. Christ has promised eternal life to us. But why did He leave us here? There's a reason why we're here. 
We need to look outside these walls and see what God is doing and read the handwriting on the wall. We need to see what God is up to today. And listen, we're never going to stumble on what God is doing. We have to get in purposely. Amen. Someone say one time, you know, you don't know God's will. No, I don't. You will never stumble in it. You have to get in it purposely. And the church needs to know what God's vision is for this world. We're about to close this year, 2019. We're going into a 2020. And wouldn't it be wonderful if the whole church had a 2020 vision for this world to reach the lost for Christ. First of all, if we're going to refresh our vision, number one, we need to remember that God made a promise of blessings for the whole world. And I would like for you through this message to mark the word whole and all, A-L-L, all. First of all, go with me to Genesis chapter 22. We see here, and we call it the Abrahamic covenant. This covenant involves God's promises of blessing the whole world. We cannot continue thinking just on us. Somebody said this morning, it's not about us. But what is it about? What is it about? It's not just about us. I know that. I love singing the song. How can it be that Christ loved me? It is amazing to think of Christ's love. But do you realize yeah. that the same God that loves you, the same God that promised to bless you in Christ, also promised to bless the whole world? Amen. Amen. We have to look beyond these walls. God is doing something amazing. Are you there with me? Read verses 28 with me. I mean, verses 18. There is the Abrahamic promise to God, to Abraham. And it says, And in thy seed, circle that word, shall all, all what? You read it out loud. All the nations. Does this implicate the whole world? All right. There's something going on here. Does this implicate the whole world? Yes. I believe the Bible and it's speaking universally. And it says, all the nations of the earth, the world, be what? Fit, say it out Blessed. This is the Abrahamic covenant and we call it, and this is what it is, it's a blessing. God says, Abraham, I will bless you personally. God bless Abraham. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. He was a rich man. And he said, I will bless your descendants. Those are the people of Israel. That's God's people. That's their peculiar people. That's the vehicle through the world to shine God. He said, I will bless you nationally. Personally, nationally. But he said, I'm going to bless you universally. What does universally mean? It means the whole world. All the families of the earth will be blessed in thy seed. Who is thy seed? Christ. That is Christ. Amen. Who came from the seed. Who came from the lineage of David. Was born of a virgin. Was manifested in flesh. We just remember Christmas. We just celebrated the incarnation of Christ. When he came to this world. Well why did he came? He came to save us. And the blessing here is of eternal life. And all the blessings that entitle when you come to Christ. See, when you come to Christ, God not only gives you eternal life, He also gives you with, with Christ so many other blessings. The Bible says that we are coherence. The Bible says that we have inherited. We are God's children. God has a will for us. What is God's will for us? A good will unto man. Not bad. Good. The angels sing an amazing song full of doctrine. What, is, what was their song? Glory to God in the highest. Yeah. And on earth. Does that mean all the world? Right. I believe so. Amen. Peace unto earth. Good will unto man. Amen. That is great. Because in that will we are saved, said Paul. Right. It is through that will. It is the seed Christ said. He is the descendant. So he is the seed. But for, for but how can the whole world be blessed if they accept Christ? Amen. They are blessed by God. This was an, a universal promise. So we need to look at what God is doing, how God promised a blessing for the whole world. But that's not all. 
When Christ ascended to heaven, before He left, He gave us a commandment to go. Read it with me. It's in Matthew 28. It's a verse where we read and we call this, this passage the Great Commission given to the church. We need to believe what the Bible says, not just pick what we like. But we need to choose what the we need to see what the Bible says, what Christ teaches us. We need to preach it. We need to believe it, and we need to practice it because there is a lot of people in churches that do not believe that it is our responsibility individually and as a body of believers to reach the lost for Christ. Some say, well, that responsibility is the pastor's responsibility. Responsibility. He, that's why he is the one who is supposed to visit. That is not true. Read James. Amen. The Bible explains in James how we, you and I, need to care for the lost. Right. And Christ commanded us, look at Matthew 28 verses, um, we're going to begin in verses 18. The Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, and in heaven and in earth. Can you read that out loud for me? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Does this mean outside of the U.S.? Does this mean every nation everywhere? All nations. And somewhere it says every creature. So notice the, 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 the inclusivity of this mission. It says all the nations. Go into all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And the promise is that His presence is with us, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. I'm not alone. You're not alone. Christ is with us. And if we believe that He's with us, He's able to do more exceedingly abundantly of what we can understand. This ministry of mission works in the power of God. It has never been on the power of wisdom. It has never been on the political power or the size power. Can you imagine? If this building was full to capacity, we will not be sufficient to finish the missions that God has given us. We need the power of the Spirit of God Amen. working through us and in us to reach the lost. You try to go and win a soul without the power of God. You've been miserable. Uh, but God's power is with us. He has promised. In fact, if you are a Christian, the Spirit of God lives with you forever. He's in your heart. The Bible says that He lives in my heart and in your heart. I believe that. And that He is there to give me the strength to be bold, to witness for Him in this world. Yes. Christ gave this commandment to His disciples. And many say, well, yeah, that was to His disciples. Does that, applicate, does that imply to us? Well, let me ask you, are you a disciple of Christ? Okay. Are you a disciple of Christ? People don't like to be confronted. But look, I'm, I'm confronting you right now. Are you a disciple of Christ? Then why would Christ expect that of His disciples back then and not expect the same from us today? Amen. That's interesting. Yeah. We are disciples of Christ. And Christ said you are the salt. You are the light. Right. And then we do have a responsibility. A commandment given by Christ. To go into all the world. This is the reason why we send missionaries to all the world. I heard Tommy Beeman is going to the Philippines. That is amazing. That is wonderful. <laughs> but who is going to go to the streets of Livonia? Who is going to go to the streets of Detroit? Who is going to go to the streets of Michigan? Who is going, going to impact the world for Christ? Amen. Our vision needs to be broader than just confined to the walls of our church. We've been like this too long. It is never God's intention for us to just together and just look at the corners and just never look beyond. No. Our vision needs to be universal of what Christ is doing. God is saying, you go to all the nations. The, the commandment is still relevant. The commandment remains. The, the need is true. The need is relevant outside. Everywhere you go, there's lost people. Who's doing no work? 
Whose work is that? Whose job is that? It is our job. Christ said, the harvest is planted, but the labors are few. The harvest is white, is ready. What's going on here? It's saying that you and I are the laborers, and we labor together with God what He's doing in this world. Amen. Reaching the lost, bringing them to heaven. Amen. What is God's plan for this world? Is it just destruction? A lot of preachers preach on that. But look, it's to save the world. And this is the reason why we have a great commandment. Not only that, we need to believe this commandment. Take it seriously. Amen. we got to take it to the streets. We've got to apply it. It's just like if you go to the pharmacy and you get the medicine for a wound or something for a problem. It says apply a certain amount like this here and there. And then, and then where you say, well, I, I, I don't think it's going to do anything if I put it here. You put it away. We do a lot of that with God's Word. No, literally what God wants us to do is take it, open it, put it on your finger, and rub it in. Apply the thing. Amen. Make it real. Right. Live it. Put feet into it. Amen. One of the greatest privileges to share Christ with other people. Amen. And our church needs to have a vision, broad vision, of winning souls for Christ. A 2020 vision. A clear vision for souls to be saved. One last thing, one other thing is, I have a few things more, but let me go to a third thing. And that is John chapter 3, verses 16. We've said that God promised a blessing for all the nations. We have seen that Christ commanded us to go to all the nations. Third, we see that God loves the whole world. And I want you to mark that word, that expression that says world. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verses 16, probably most of you know this verse. Can you say it by heart aloud? John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves the world. Does that mean your neighbor? Yes. Does that mean that difficult co-worker? Yes. Does that mean your worst enemy? Yes. Yes. Does that mean your brother in Christ? Yes. God loves the world. The people in the world. He's referring to the people of the world. And God loves His creation. He created it. So God loves the world. Who said this? Christ said this. Do you believe this? Yes. There's so much division in the world. So much anger and violence in the world. People have stopped believing that God loves them and that God loves the world. And many cynicals say, how can God love the world? And look at the shape we're in. You weren't in great shape when Christ came to you. Right. <laughs> we brought nothing to Christ. Everything we are and everything we will be is going to be... Thanks to Him. That's why in heaven we'll sing it. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Look, look. We are where we are because of Christ. And if Christ can change you, can He change the world? He has changed the world. The history has never been the same. The world has never been the same since Christ came to this world. The world lay in darkness, but, shot, but light shined upon darkness. And light prevail upon darkness. Amen. The light is Jesus Christ and he that followed him will walk not in darkness. Christ is the light of the world. The world, not just the church. The world. Think with me, world-wise, globally. The church needs to refresh its vision continually about missions for this world. God's vision is the mission to, to win the lost for Christ. God loves the world. Can you say that out loud with me? God loves the world. I know you had a difficult, not a difficult week. I'm not going to say that. I know you had a very probably relaxed week. But I want you to try harder. God loves the world. And if the church captures this truth, then the influence of that church will impact its surrounders. The cutting edge of the church is his love for God and love for sinners. Amen. Sinners need 
to be, they need to see that you are a Christian. A Christian not only had to love, but he had to be happy. Honestly, when I see some pictures of the people who are sitting at the church, they don't look happy. What is wrong? What happened? I mean, I say this to our, to our congregation. We've come together around our Lord Jesus Christ and we'll worship Him, we'll magnify Him. This is the reason why we gather here. And we'll do it gladly, we'll do it happy. Because the Bible says, I, I was gladly, I went to the house of God, something like that. Gladly. How's, how's the word? Yo me alegré con los que me decían a la casa de Jehová y I was glad for those who told me we will go to the Lord's house. I know you're happy, you're, you're, you're happy, you're a happy church. But you will never be too happy. You will never be too excited. You need to get excited for the things of God. Amen. The ministry of Christ was an intense ministry from the beginning to the end. And the church needs to have intensity to reach the lost for Christ. It needs to have intensity. God loves the world. God calls every man to repentance. Did you know that? Every single man? Yeah. Where does the Bible say that? Yeah. Go to Acts chapter 17. And I'm walking my way through. I'm almost done. Two more things about it and we finish. But what are we looking at? We're looking at our vision for mission. It's a biblical mission. Notice what the Bible says in Acts chapter 17. Verses 30. You have to say amen. Uh, that means you don't have it. But we'll keep continuing flipping the pages. You'll find it. If you can find it by the end, then forget it. Verses 30 says, you with me? And the times of this ignorance, this is Paul speaking, God winked at. This means God overlooked. What, what did God overlook? The ignorance of this world. But now commendeth, circle that word, can you read the, can you read the word for me? All, All men everywhere to repent. Yeah. This is the message of the church. Repent and come to Christ. Amen. He will save. He will heal. He will restore. People need Christ. Amen. They don't need to, they, honestly, they don't need psychological I call it psychologos. <laughs> that means psycho crazy. I'm dealing, I'm trying to help somebody come out of that. She visited several psychologists. You will not believe the trash they put in their head. Yeah. That's right. She has a need, a spiritual need. Who meets the spiritual needs? The Savior of our soul, Christ. Right. He's the bread of life. We're completing Him. And it is a commandment from God directly to all men to repent. What is the message? He commandeth to every man to repent. What does that mean? Everyone should turn from their sins and come to Christ. A revival will start when there is remorse of sin. The reason why revival is not happening in America is because we're content with sin. Right. We're not dealing with sin, personal sins, public sins. There must be a remorse of sin. Look through the scriptures and you will notice that the people that turn to Christ, that turn to God in repentance, were those who felt remorse of sin. Right. You need to re feel remorse of sin and come to Him. Return to God. Come to God. Where is this in the Bible? It's in the Bible, the book of Esther. You will notice how they repented of their sins. But this is speaking to the world. It's speaking to you. We can repent. We have a mediator between God and man. Christ the Savior. Therefore the Bible says. He's, he teaches every man to repent. Maybe you know somebody. That needs Christ. You know what's God's message to that man? Is that God loves him. And he commands him to repent. They're, they don't have to try to figure out. Well, what am I going to repent of? Oh no no. They know. They know what they need to repent of. They've been living this, the same way and they need a change in their lives. It's why I need, to, I need to try this new. Many people will try new things for New Year. I can guarantee you. What's the, what's the number one they're going to think? Well, I need to lose some weight. Personally, I do. 
But people will set goals in their lives. They say, I need a change. The most amazing change is Christ in our lives. Amen. So God commands every man to repent. That is the vision. God wants everyone to repent. Another thing, with the same thing, I want to show you another verse about this. This is uh, Second Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy, verses 2. Does God want every man to be saved? Does God want every man to repent? Notice what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2. This epistle was written to Timothy by the Apostle Paul. A young man who believed that was needing instruction on how to carry out the church, how to establish guides and principles for the church. And, and on this one, the Bible says, are you there with me? Verse 4. The Bible says, who will have all men, circle the word, all men, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. God wants every man to be saved. Amen. The extension of our mission is God wants every man to be saved. Do we believe that? I know you have a strong emphasis in missions. I know you do. But how broad is your vision? How extensive is I mean, think about it. God doesn't just want a white church. Today we have the white church, the black church, the Latino church, the Korean church, and understand there are barriers. I believe me, there are barriers. Language is one, culture is another one, philosophy of life is another, backgrounds are, yeah, I get that. But I am commended. To speak to every creature on the earth. And especially that I speak both languages. If I come to a door. And a Chinese person comes out. And he speaks a little bit of English. You think God is not going to call me to account? God never intended. For us just to be one group. And be there. No. It's universal. Amen. Through the Bible. Missions is every creature. All men. God wants them to be safe. We cannot exclude. We must be inclusive. America is the melting pot. What a great opportunity to reach people for Christ. I mean, I was in the store the other day doing business with the phone. The man in there is a Muslim. I know he's a Muslim. He was sitting there, it was around time, what, one? While we're waiting there, the subject of religion came in. And I asked him, what do you have a religion? He said, I'm Muslim. I said, I love talking to Muslims. In fact, can we talk for a moment? And nobody was in the story. He said, yeah. Right before I started, he said, I don't like your God. I said, why? He said, whose God will order women and children to be killed like you see in the, in the Bible. In fact, I am from, I am from, um, from Palestine. Oh, you're from Israel. <laughs> he said, no, I'm from Palestine. I'm not from Israel. <laughs> Those people, he said, are murderers. God, he's God ordered to children. And I said, can you pause for a moment? He said, yeah. I said, you know the, you know the reason why God commanded those people to be obliterated, literally clean, wiped out. He said, no. I said, can I explain to you? I said, yeah. I said, first of all, their fathers offered their children as a sacrifice to their gods. They married men with men and women with women. They corrupted themselves to the core so much that God had to say, wipe them out! Anybody, wipe them out. Because if you notice, if you reflect on the law, the, the, the army, in the law, the, the five books of Moses, you see God says, you don't, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do this because these are the things the nations ahead of you have done. And that I might bring blessings to you or curse them to you. Right. Yeah. And this is the, and I said, Ash, what's his name? Ash. This is the very reason we have a holy God. At the moment I began to explain those things, his face completely changed. And he, this is what he said. If I was not a Muslim, 
Christianity is what I would like to be. My wife is a Christian. Ah, I said, why are you not a Christian? I began to explain about Christ. He didn't make a decision. I'm working with him. Who is reaching the Muslims? Ah, oh, they're murderers. They don't know Christ. They're dead in their sins and trespasses. You have to look at other people. God wants them to be saved. Amen. If I would have thought, well, this guy has to have a chance. Can you imagine if other people would think the way Christ Christians are thinking today, their view is narrow, it's so, so limited. No. God wants every man to be saved. Amen. Amen. Not only that, God has provided a sacrifice for the whole world. 1 John chapter 2. Can you go there with me? John chapter, 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2. Do you believe the Bible? Yeah. I believe the Bible. And the Bible says this about the world. 1 John chapter 2 verses 2. Notice what it says. Are you there with me? Amen. And the Bible says, And He is the propitiation for our sins. Wonderful Savior. He is. He, he died for our sins. And the Bible says, And not for ours only. Can you circle that word? But also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. I know there's no Pharisees here, okay? I know. Do you believe the Bible? This, this is confrontation to you as a church. The Bible says that God provided a sacrifice for the whole world. Do you believe that? When Christ died on the cross, He died for all men. And for all men he died. He died for all men. Are you kidding me? No. He died for the Jews. He died for the Greeks. He died for the Israelites. And he died for the Gentiles. He died for you and me. He placed his body, holy body. And was a sacrifice to save us. It is amazing to think this truth. The most atrocious people in this world, Christ made it an atonement for them. He died for all, once and for all, Amen. for everybody. You and I have something in common, and we're brothers and sisters for a reason. It's because the blood that saved you is the same blood that saved me. One blood. As somebody call it the scarlet thread. The family of God is the most amazing family because we are saved through the blood. In fact, God has chosen to forgive you and never remember your sins no more through the blood of Christ. Sins are horrible. It's the most terrible thing that can happen to a person. Guilt is horrible. But it is wonderful to know that there is forgiveness in Christ through His blood who justifies us and who cleans us and presents us like innocents before God. So your vision for missions. God has promised a blessing to all the world. Christ has commanded us to go into all the world. God loves the whole world. God commands every man to repent. One last thing. And God has provided a sacrifice for all men. But one last thing is this one. In heaven, there will be people from all the world. Amen. God never created you or created man to be cast into the lake of fire. I have read the Bible from page to page several times and yet have not found the verse that says hell was created for man. It says it was created for the devil and his angels. In heaven, I love heaven. I love heaven. Do you love heaven? Amen. The Bible presents us the picture of heaven. Can you go with me to Revelation chapter 4 and we close here. Revelation chapter 4. 
Actually, it's chapter 5, verses 9. Can you stand with me for a moment, please? We read this passage. I just want you to stretch a little bit. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, verses 9. Are you there with me? Amen. Revelation 5. Actually, it's 6. No, no, no. Yes, yeah, 5, 9. I'm confused in my verse in my Spanish English Bible here. Are you there with me then? Let's read it together. And they sing a new song. This song has not been yet sing. The Bible is prophecy. This book is prophecy. It will happen. They sing a new song. What is their song about? Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by the blood out of every kindred and every tongue and every people and every nation. Amen. Church, our vision needs to be expanded. Uh, there is a, a picture that I always have admired when I visit this church. Remain standing. Uh, Pastor Brown has this picture when you're walking up on the steps. And I could not pass it knowing that I was going to be speaking on the vision for missions. So I went up and I looked at it. I stared at it. And I said, this is how God views this world. With the eyes of love and the eyes of hope for them. And I said, this is how our church needs to view the world. Amen. Stop complaining. The most important question that I have for you, that morning my vision got blurry. I don't know if it was my sugar. I don't know. <laughs> but when she said, refresh your vision, this is, this is literally what I do. What I did, I was full of panic. Remember the situation? Frustrated, kind of nervous, failing this test. So this is what I did. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's try this. If you're going to have a vision for missions on 2020, and have a 2020 vision for missions, you need to refresh your vision for God. Many of you have blurry vision about this world. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says where there's no vision, people I don't know how's your Christian life, but as a church, maybe individually, maybe you can say this morning, look, my vision is glory. I don't win souls because my vision is glory. I can see them. Why can I not see them? Because you need a vision refreshener. And the scripture is exactly that, a vision refreshener. Maybe this morning, you need to come and say, hey, ask God for forgiveness. Maybe you've been critical of the world. Maybe you've been critical of others. Aren't you glad God loves you? Amen. God loves the indigenous. God loves people. Why don't you come this morning and make things right with God? God, God, I want to start this year with a clear vision of what you're doing in this world. I don't know, but if, you, if God has dealt with you this morning in something, why don't you respond? Let's bow our heads and pray together. Where, what God is doing this morning. However God leads you, come forward. Come, come to this altar. Say, so Lord, refresh my vision, refresh my sight, that I might see sinners the way you do. Maybe God is dealing with you this morning about going somewhere and starting a mission work. You will never be happy until you respond to the Lord and say, God, this is your will for my life. I want to do this. Let's pray together.